Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordeen, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. Today's show is is more of a question to, that many people have in, in their hearts and their minds today that they ask themselves. And today's title of the show is, is Tithing is in the New Testament. In, in today's show, we're going to be sharing about four key keys that unlock covenant blessings to financial harvests in our lives in the seasons of financial harvest, amen, that amen. we need. That's we need right. those, those seasons. Absolutely. And this is going to be a fantastic show. So please take a minute, share this broadcast to your timelines right now. Share, share, share. We know that a lot of people need a financial blessing in their life, and this this show will really help everyone that has been struggling. You know, there's four key covenants in the Word of God that will cause you to walk in financial freedom, and these are keys to success in, in the favor of God in our lives. That's Amen? right. That's right. So at the end of the show, we will also be re revealing a key to help anyone that is struggling to be begin a path with God by faith that will lead to the road of covenant and freedom, no matter how strapped you are financially. So make sure to stay with us as we embark on this journey together today. Amen. You know, many people want shortcuts and they, they want it their own way. But if you will listen to this message in its entirety and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal his ways, he will strengthen your faith and help you to align with his heart for your financial freedom. That's right. So we're going to pray right now. So, Father, we just ask that you open the ears of the hearer, Father God. Yes. Open up the hearts that they would receive the word today, Lord. Open up their eyes of understanding, Father God, so that your word could penetrate, Father God, even into the deepest parts, Lord God, that they have questioned. And, Father, we just ask right now that you bless every person that hears this broadcast, Lord God, with favor and blessings, Lord, as they align themselves with you, no matter where they're starting on their journey, Lord, even if from a tither to someone that's, that is praying to become a tither. Father, we ask that your blessings start immediately as they make covenant with you and the path to their financial freedom will be unlocked by doing it. So, Father, we thank you. We applaud the blood of Jesus over each and every person hearing and their family. And we pray this in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. We want to, we have to start with honor. That's right. You know, we, we have to honor God in what we do and say. And we, we come together and we gather together to honor our honor our, our God. We've got to we've got to come in reverently, amen. And um and really honor him in everything that we're doing and mm -hmm. with all of our substance. You know, he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's right. The Lord gave the church the governing offices. And there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. All have different mantles of anointing to do the work that God has called them to do, and they are all different. Yet, all of the offices are important to bring the body of Christ to full maturity. So, the fivefold ministry works together to bring forth completion and bring glory to God. And this is because God made us his kingdom. Come on. I, 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 want, to, I want you to notice before I say that, that, that notice that there is no priest that is mentioned in the fivefold. Okay, and, and this is because God has made us his kingdom of priests. That's right. Okay, and we are all his priesthood, male and female alike. Amen. So we, we are a kingdom of priests. And in our duty as the as the priest, as a priest unto the Lord, is to offer up sacrifices. Yes. We offer up the sacrifice of praise. We intercede on the behalf of others. And we mm -hmm. honor God by placing him first in everything. That's right. And we bring forth the offerings to him with a thankful heart. Amen. You know, the, the offerings go, go up to him and the blessings come down. Come on. You know, and the Lord Jesus Christ is prophet, priest, and king. That's right. You know, and God has given us... You know, a, 
a prophetic voice yes. of priestly duties and kingdom authority. And all it, it all follows after the pattern of who he is mm -hmm. and who he has created us to be That's to right. be. Come on. Our prophetic voices, you know, we have we have decrees that we decree the word of God. Mm-hmm. And angels are dispatched. That's right. And our priestly duties include our walk of obedience mm -hmm. to his word and his covenants, as well as our sacrifice of praise. Our worship ushers us into the presence of God. And it is in his presence that we receive keenly authority mm -hmm. over the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy it's, it attacks. He attacks these areas. And these are the areas that he really attacks us hard on is first he does not want the word of God going forth, sending angels on assignment against the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Second, yeah, this is the second area, is, is the enemy attacks our giving to keep you out of covenant so you cannot have the provision that you need to advance the kingdom work. And third, the enemy attacks your worship and intimacy with God because it is in the presence of the Lord that God gives us kingdom authority over the enemy. Intimacy is the root, and ministry is, is the fruit of that intimacy, that time we have with God. Come on, that's right. So are you fully persuaded that he's on the throne and that he loves you? Not that you love him only, but that he loves you Absolutely. with an everlasting love. With a love that is pure and measureless, measureless and strong. Do you really understand that God wrote your story and was mindful of you before the foundations of this world. Amen. That he has a plan for your life and it's a good plan. It's a good plan. Come on. He's the but here's the catch. We we have to choose to line ourselves up with his plan for our lives and follow his lead. Amen. Amen. So we see in Proverbs 21 2, it says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Right? Because in the eyes of the Lord, we are either saved or unsaved. Yeah. We're either uh, we either have His light or we're in the darkness, right? We're we're either in covenant with God or we're we're out of covenant uh, with God. So we're following His lead in in faithful obedience to His word, or we're outside of covenant through our disobedience. That's right. Right. Yes. Lack of faithfulness or just lack of knowledge. That's right. We want to point out how important faithfulness and obedience truly is. You know, in 1 Samuel 15, we find that King Saul had his marching orders from the Lord, but he compromised. He sacrificed in the work. He worked hard in the battle, but he was only, he only cho chose to do half of what God told him to do. We find in the in verse 22 that Samuel told Saul God would rather have obedience than sacrifice. That's right. You know, he would he would rather have obedience Come to on. the full word. Yeah. And God wants our faithful obedience. Come on, that's right. You know, a lot of people wonder why they're not getting full prophetic fulfillment. And that has all to do with obedience. That's right. You know, you can get partial prophetic fulfillment of the promises of God in your life because you're not willing to submit in some areas. That's right. That's absolutely true. <laughs> so we can come to church and offer up the sacrifice of praise, and we can sacrifice to build the house of the Lord. We can work to build our communities and give the poor to the poor and, and still fall short of receiving his blessings because of disobedience to his word. Are y'all hearing this tonight? That's right. So you see, there's a big difference between being in covenant and being outside of covenant. Before Joshua could take the people over into the promised land, we find that he had to first bring the people into covenant with God. Mm. We find that in Joshua 5.2. At that time, the, it says, at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel a second time. You know, circumcision symbolizes coveted. Mm -hmm. It's a cutting away of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Our sin nature being put under and causing us to choose his ways. Our God is a covenant God. That's right. And he is a God of order. Some covenant promises are unconditional and some are conditional. That's right. God made an unconditional co covenant to Noah mm -hmm. that, you know, that he would never destroy the earth with a flood again. Mm -hmm. But he made an, you know, and he made an everlasting covenant to us through Abraham that promises if we are born again, we are adopted into the family and you know, we are grafted in to That's Israel. Right. Amen. Yep. Amen. 
we become the seed of Abraham and have a covenant promise, that covenant promise over us of favor and blessing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God, God's promises are amazing. Absolutely. So God's promise to Abraham is, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you, right? right? Through you, I will bless all the families of the earth. Hallelujah. You know, our water baptism makes it known that we are in covenant with God, the Father. Dying to our old mm -hmm. sin nature and coming up out of the water, a new creature created in Christ Jesus. In addition to being made new, it is his will that we prosper. Yep. He wants us to prosper Amen. in this life. Mm -hmm. You know, sec, uh, actually, 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Mm -hmm. Be in health even as your soul prospereth. That's right. you know, our soul is our intellect. It is our mind. Mm -hmm. You know, when we renew our mind with the washing of the word. And as we do, our souls prosper. If, we, if our souls are prospering, then we're going to be in good health. Amen. And we're going to be prospering all that we put our hands to That's do. Right. You know, as we read God's word and hear God's word, he writes it on the tablets of our heart and we he he reveals it to us. Amen. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. And the and the more we speak God's revealed word, that rhema word, that sword of the spirit, we are decreeing blessings over our lives. As our souls prosper, we prosper in health and life. Amen. So Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we see in Psalm 37.25, the word says, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Come on. Our God is a faithful and his covenants are sure. And when we settle in, in our hearts that God is our source not money or anything that this world has to offer when we find ourselves fully persuaded that he is able and willing to provide all of our needs and, and we place our hope and trust in him alone when we're fully persuaded that's when we're able to uh that we can we can prove the unrighteous manna and trust uh the true riches Amen. right that's so right. so the question i ask is are you fully persuaded are that you? our God is alive. Amen. And and on the throne today. Come Amen. on. Amen. Are right? you persuaded? Are you fully persuaded? Fully persuaded. Amen. Malachi 3 6 says, For I am the Lord and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm. We are not consumed in our daily provision when we are in covenant with him. We want to share some important biblical truths today that will help you to stay in covenant. It is important for every believer to understand that there are four different types of giving found in the Word of God. And eat, and they all four have different uh, purposes yeah. in their different promises that are rendered from each one of those types. That's right. You know, there are many believers in our day that are lumping these all, into, all together into one. And, and that is not God's order of things. No. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people out there uh, that claim to stand on the covenant promises of God, yet toss honoring God with the tithe and the first fruits out with the law. Mm -hmm. And they say that they are under grace and that it's not for today. But the truth is, there's a very big difference between covenant and the law. That's right. And we see that Abraham paid tithes to Mel Melchizedek over 400 years before the law was given. Mm -hmm. This covenant was put into place by God for all generations to come thereafter. And, and the purposes it was to bless those that honored God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God blessed Abraham and, and everything that he put his hands to do. He was he always provided for Abraham even during his testing. Mm -hmm. The Lord provided a, a ram as an alternate sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And just as God proved and provided, he proved him there, he also provided a way for Abraham. Yeah. You know, he, he has and continues to provide for us all the time. That's right. You know, he will never stop providing for his children. And that is why his name is Je uh, Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. He, that means my provider. Come on. The Hallelujah. Devil, yeah. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. 
The, the devil doesn't want you to be in covenant with God. Let's, let's just get that straight right now. That is why uh, there are so many teachings out there that say, don't tithe, just give occasional offering, offerings and alms, right? Yeah, that's right. But we're going to look at 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers have, having itching ears. <clears throat> People think that they are choosing the easier ro easier road, but they're they're really doing uh, what they're doing is they're allowing for the enemy to steal their blessing. And once you re you, you really get into this today with us, you're going to really clearly understand why, how, and why. That's right. Psalm eighty nine thirty four says, "My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips." And we also see in Deuteronomy eight eighteen. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Right? Amen. Who is it? It's God. It's God. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. That's right. The tithe, the fa we want you to think of the father. Mm -hmm. Okay? The father is the first, and we honor him with our tithe. That's right. And we see in Malachi 3, verses 10 and 11. The word says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out uh, a blessing, that there shall not be enough room to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall he your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. That's right. Our tithe is the meat and drink in his house. And the word explains if we if we disobey God in our tithe, we are not in covenant with him. We're just not in covenant with him. You can't be in covenant with God if you're not tithing. That's right. Outside of co of covenant, God's hand is lifted and the door, the, it's he's lifted and the door is open for the enemy That's to come right. on in. And come he on. has legal right to devour your substance. Yes. He has legal right to, to uh, cause your finances to, to dwindle. That's right. And, uh, and, the, and the reason the enemy is after the tithe is not merely a one person's blessing or their, or from their, their household, one household. It's much bigger than that. That's right. And we see in 1 Corinthians 9.14, the word says, Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. That's right. So the enemy ultimate his ultimate plan is to stop the gospel from Come going on. forth. The false teachings that are out there in our day is saying that tithing isn't in the New Testament. They are either not seeing this, what we're going to show you today, or they refuse to look at it, or the truth, uh, you know, the truth of these scriptures are veiled from their eyes, mm -hmm. and, they, and it's affecting them not to understand. It's causing them not to understand. That's right. So let's take a look at them closely. And if there has been any question in you uh, about whether tithing is in the New Testament, we hope to put that to rest today. Amen. Amen. We all know that the red letters mean that, you know, that Jesus himself is speaking. Mm -hmm. And these scriptures we're going to share with you is are in red letters. Come on. Okay. So we're going to look closely at two scriptures in the New Testament that are, that were spoken by Jesus himself. Pay close attention to how the New, New Living Translation breaks down the word into a more simpler form. Yes. Okay? We're going to take first take a look at Luke 11, uh, verse 42 in the King James Version. It says, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to, to have done and not to leave the other undone. We're going to look at it also here in the New New, New King James. So what he's saying here is that you should tithe, yeah. but don't leave out judgment and the love of God. Okay? So we're looking at the, the New King James uh, Version. It says, These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Now let's take a look at the New Living Translation, because it makes it very plain here. It says, you should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. So the, the word of the word of the Lord always backs itself up 
in doctor in in doctrinal truths. So you know, we, you've got to have two scriptures that are saying the same thing mm -hmm. to have a doctrine. It's the it's the rule of scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at this next scripture that found in Matthew. Matthew twenty three twenty three. We're looking at the King James version. It says, "Woe well unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites!" Now nobody can get. Seems like a lot of people can't get past that first sentence, right? And so they don't pay attention to anything else that's said in that verse, right? Okay. It says, "For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of law, judgment, mercy, and faith." It says, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. What should you have done? Paid tithes. What should you not leave undone? Uh, the way to your matters of law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Right. They, Jesus is saying you're, you have to minister to the people about the law, about judge, righteous judgment. You've got to minister to the people mercy and faith and mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he's 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 just getting on them about you need to be ministering. Don't just take the money. Don't just take the money right. for the for the synagogue or the church, but right. make sure you're ministering to the people Come on. in righteousness. Amen. All right, so Matthew 23, 23 in a new King James Version, it says, These ought ye, these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. And again in the New Living Translation, it says, Yes. You, you it says you should tithe, yes. But do not neglect the more important things. So in both of these scriptures, many people just can't get past that Jesus is calling them hypocrites or saying woe to them. But when reading these scriptures completely, it is clear that Jesus himself is saying that they ought to have tithe and taken up the tithe. What Jesus was upset about was that the ministers were not ministering to the people first in love, mercy, righteous judgment, and faith. So, as we all know that this is not the case in the majority of the majority of the households of faith here in America and around the world. And our churches most will agree with me that the love of God and the mercy of God are being ministered to right you know, in righteous judgment and, and causing faith to arise in the people's hearts. Amen? Amen. As we're all coming in together. You know, altars are open after every service for prayer and ministers themselves. You know, they're, they're ministering. Yes. They're ministering. You know, and, and there are their team of ministers are ministering. Right. You know, that's always available for counsel when needed. And if it's not, then you need to find a household of faith that it is available. Amen. Amen. Because that's what ministers are supposed to be doing. And that's what the teams of ministers are supposed to be doing. Amen. So so if you're if that's not available to you, you need to find a new church home. Yes. Or you need to, 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 to speak up about it. So if, if you are in a household of faith that, that this is in order, though, and they're ministering to the people the proper way, there is no need to shy away from these scriptures. That's right. So we see uh, in the prophecy of Joel, uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. So what is the tithe and the promise of return? The tithe is the tenth. And the return of promise is that God blesses the 90%. 90% blessed is a whole lot more <laughs> than 100% uh, open for the enemy to come in and devour. Absolutely. For it to be cursed. Right? Absolutely. When God blesses you in your storehouse, you find that your money stretches out in ways only God can do. His angels are at the ready to bless those that are lining themselves up with God's covenant. That's right. It is not the amount that makes a difference. Mm. It is the condition of your heart toward God mm -hmm. and your obedience to him that he that he responds to. That's right. It, it is the the cheerful giver that is walking in faith that you know that God is really looking for. Come on. You know, he backs up his word and his promises toward us every time. Malachi 3.10 in the New Living Translation it shows us that. It says, bring all the tithes in, in the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. And if you do, says the Lord of, of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Come on. So try it. Come on. He's saying, try it and put me to the test. That's right, plainly said right there That's in the right. New Living Translation. You know, his angels line us 
up with new contracts, you you know, divine appointments, yes, unexpected resources yes. and unexpected discounts. Come on. Promotion comes from the Lord. Yeah. And he's the one that gives us wisdom to yeah. obtain wealth. Amen. He's the one who tells us what to do or we don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. When we have the favor of God upon us, he gives us favor with mankind. And he allows he shows us by wisdom how to spend that favor mm -hmm. to get us from point A to point B to get that promotion. Amen. To move forward. Yeah. Amen. Our businesses. And, and that the Lord has pleasure in blessing us that our joy would be full. He desires for us to have a fresh testimony on our lips, declaring, look what the Lord has done. Amen. And, you know, I just wanted to tell a, a, a quick thing that happened to us last weekend because we're tithers. I went to the store for one thing, but I took a different path and a different route than I normally would. And I was walking past all the meat cases yes. and I happened to notice that certain things were on like a super sale mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i'm like well wait a minute we're saving like incredible amounts of money i don't know if they made a mistake here or not but i know god's getting ready to pour us out a blessing so i bought us a whole bunch of different meats that would have normally cost like two and three times as much that's right but we were i was there at the right time because god ordained it to be that way because we're tithers and he wants our money to go further That's right. than it would have normally if we weren't tithing. Then there wouldn't have been that happenstance of... He stretches our money out by right. allowing us to get discounts. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. That's just one way he does That's it. That's just a simple little way, but still it, it all adds up to a blessing. That's right. It's still a blessing. So, we, you know, we spoke a lot here of tithing due to the importance of it because it's a principal thing. Yes, it is. Right? And if the devil can keep you from tithing, he's keeping you out of your co covenant blessings. And at that point, he's got your finances. He's got legal right Come over on. your finances. It, it's like putting your money in pockets with holes mm -hmm. and, and holding or holding sand in arthritic hands. That's it, right. it just runs through as quickly, no matter how hard you try to hold on to it. That's right. Right. And we need to break that poverty spirit off many people. Yes. Um, you know that that that, uh, that just hold on to anything that they've got, but mm -hmm. God wants you to unstop your bottle, Amen. so that, that He can flow more in and through Amen. you. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. So we, we want to move on to the next covenant because there's another, there's a second type of giving in the word. Uh, in, in the second type of giving is, is a covenant of blessing of the first fruits offering. Mm -hmm. And we want you to think of Jesus. Right. Okay. Jesus. First fruits. First Jesus. fruits. That's right. Just as Jesus was offered once, our first fruits offering is a one time offering for the whole harvest. Mm -hmm. The Father gave his one and only Son as a sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus fulfilled the feast of the first fruits by being the first fruits of the resurrection. Come on. Lazarus and and uh, his his daughter had been raised from the dead the dead prior to Christ's resurrection. Is it Jarius? Amen. Lazarus and Jairus' daughter. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. They were they were both raised from the dead prior to Christ's resurrection. How are they? They were, you know, resurrected back into a normal life, into the regular the bodies, bodies. I mean, which would eventually die again. Right. But Jesus was the first to be raised into a new glorified body, never to die again. Mm. He is the sheaf that is waived to be an accepted be accepted for you amen 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 he's the chief. so he is the first fruits of the uh the first of the harvest that was waved before god the father that's right jesus fulfilled the feast of first fruits and he is our jubilee but now is christ risen from the dead right and become the first fruits of them that slept we are to bring our first fruits of increase unto the Lord. Some people give a special offering once a year and believe God for the increase for the whole year. Mm -hmm. Others give it on their increases whenever the increases come. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, a good example would be if a person received a $20 a week raise on their paycheck. Right. Well, the first time that you see that $20 raise on your paycheck, give that first 20 to, to the Lord Amen. as a first fruits offering yeah. that he will continue to bring more increases on your paycheck yep. and increase you more and more all year long. Right. That's how you do, you can do the first fruits offering. That's right. 
And um, God promises to bless the rest of the year with more increases. Amen. Because our God is a God of multiplication. Isn't he? Amen. Come on. He's, a, he's not a, a God of addition. He's not a cheap God. And he's not a God of subtraction. No. He is a God of multiplication. That's right. Come on. That, Rebecca, it declare says that. He owns all the gold and all the silver anyway. You better believe it. It's all his anyway. It's all God's. Amen. Come on. So we see in Exodus 13, 11 through 15. The word says, as they entered the promised land, God required of them the firstlings, and the promise is that all else is blessed. It was the first fruits offering that the Lord was upset with Achan about in the story of Jericho. That's right. right? Come yes. on. It, 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 we, we really would like for you to read that story. Come on. Uh, it, it, it's you an eye it. opener, and, and it should be a testimony into your life that you need to to walk in covenant with God. So in your free time, take a look at Joshua chapter 6, 7, and 8, and you'll find that it was not the tithe, but it was the first fruits offering that God commanded here, right? That's he right. commanded all the spoils of Jericho, and he intended to bless them with all the future spoils of the battles to come after, right? And we find that after they dealt with Achan's disobedience to God, Joshua and his men went on to succeed in 11 more battles collecting much more spoil for themselves. That's right. God, God allowed them to collect in all that spoil for yeah. them. If they would have just honored God That's right. with the first fruit. Right. And obeyed him. And they did all except for Achan. Right. But they had to get they had to get past that because mm. they, they lost the, the first battle yeah. uh, to, to have attack yeah. on AI. Right. Because there was sin in the camp. Yep. You know, you Come can't on. you can't properly Ooh. battle and win your battles and, and, and gain spoils of war if you've got sin in your camp. Come on. Come on. There's a there's there's a much bigger story there. But we'll get <laughs> into it that. another yeah, time. Listen to that. Amen. But I know you're picking up on it. Yes. The third type of covenant blessing is our seed faith offering. And, and we want you to think of this is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. Holy Spirit is a gift to us. And he helps us to grow. Amen. Okay. Seeds grow. Amen. And then seed yeah. faith grows. So our offerings are seeds sown into our future harvests in our lives. That's right. So when you sow a seed faith offering, you're sowing into your own future Amen. harvest. Amen. This is the only type of, of giving that God promises a 30, 60, or 100-fold return of blessing on. Mm -hmm. the, de the determining factor of the rate of blessing is tied to your obedience to Him and His Word. That's right. It is your walk. You know, how you live your life. Mm -hmm. It, it it all comes down to the level in which your heart is surrendered to do his will in his word. Yes. The, the Lord said to seek him first mm -hmm. and put on his righteousness and his will for your lives in the, the decisions that you make, you know, whether it's to follow his lead or 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 not in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. You know, this would be a good time to really to reflect back on the areas in your life that, that are a struggle. Um, to relinquish control, that you you have a problem with with relinquishing control yep. to God. Mm -hmm. You know these things are personal situations that that you say I've got this. Right. You can have this and this and that, mm -hmm. but I've got this. I got this. Or you can have that person and that person, but I got this person, mm -hmm. right? And you know, there, the, these are the areas in our lives that still need to be open to God's leading, surrendered to His will, mm -hmm. and then it is up to us to choose to be obedient, putting His will, you know, in the the, the matter before we, you know, make our decisions on our own, That's you know, right. Amen. without saying yes, but. Or what if? What if? That's right. And we see in Romans 12 too, the word says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. So when sowing our offerings, it is just as Jesus spoke concerning sowing the word. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can be sown into all types of ground mm -hmm. in the hearts of man. You know, our offerings likewise, you know, the, so the word can be sown into all types of ground mm -hmm. with, with, with different types of, of people's hearts right. and the conditions of their hearts. Yep. But our offerings are just like that. You know, they, they should be sown into good, fertile ground, Come ministries on. that are doing the work of the Lord with a full heart 
you know, and, and really making a difference. Amen. Like High Tower Ministries like High Tower International. Ministries International. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So strategically into ground, you know, implant your seeds and then water it. Allow it to be watered with the you know, with the presence of God, with the word with of the God, word. speaking God's word over it by faith. And let the Holy Spirit water. Amen. And we see in Mark 4, verse 8, the word says, and, and other fell on good ground. And did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. That's right. So these two scriptures are put together here. It's uh, Romans 12, 2 and Mark 4, 7. 8. I'm sorry, Mark 4, 8. Mm -hmm. our, our blessing, our obedience, okay? So you got a 30-fold 30 30 fold is the good will of God. Mm -hmm. If you're going to reap a 60-fold blessing on the, what you're sowing, then you're walking in the acceptable will of God. But if you're looking for a hundredfold blessing on, on your seed faith offering, then you should be walking in the perfect will of God. Come on, amen. Seed faith offerings are the surest way to turn things around and begin to see increase. That's right. And the fourth type of covenant blessings is alms. And that's giving to man. That's right. So when you think alms, think man. All right. Giving alms is not giving to God, but unto man. It's when we give to the poor and the needy. So Luke 6, 38 says, give and it should be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met with all, it shall be measured to you again. Right. For the same measure you meet shall be measured again to you. So the return on alms is dollar for dollar. God gives us back what we lend to the poor and the needy. God loves it when we give to the needy. And he even sent an angel in a vision to tell Cornelius that his prayers and alms had come up before the Lord as a memorial. That's right. right. Yes. Meaning God remembered his sacrifice and his giving to the poor. God blessed Cornelius not only by restoring him to what he had given out, but the Lord also saved his whole household and baptized them with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing. <laughs> yeah. What a blessing. So four types of giving. The tithe, the father. Okay. First fruits, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Seed faith, the Holy Spirit. Alms, man. Mm. Okay. And so there's four types of giving, four types of blessings. And if we try to take God's order out of his covenant promises, it is just doesn't work out well for us. No. If we are trying to lump them all into one, and then we're believing God or one big seed, you know, one big offering, and you know, and, and our, your giving does not become, it really doesn't become seed no. until mm -hmm. you have already honored God with your tithe first. That's right. Okay, yep. so if you're if you're just giving offerings, you're giving back to God what is His, and you're calling it your seed right. for your future harvest. Right. When we bring God our tithe, we're honoring God. Mm -hmm. Where is the honor if we are just sowing seeds into our own future harvest? Mm. And, uh, and and if you're not giving to God what's first is His, you're really just calling His tithe your seed, and you're and you're still walking with. Uh, 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 your your finances are, are really under a curse. That's right. You, you, they're they're open to the enemy to come in and devour and mm -hmm. steal. Mm -hmm. he, you know, the enemy will always, will come in in seasons to look at ways to uh, to steal business from you or to make it harder for you to make money. Yeah. Um, to cause things to just start breaking, breaking. down everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all of a sudden just you've got a domino effect and everything just seems to be breaking down. That's that's under the curse. Right. And oftentimes that happens when we're outside of covenant because we've opened a door. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things that, that need to be fixed along the way. Right. But there is, a, there is an unnaturalness of always having lack in your life. Mm -hmm. Lack is of the enemy. Yeah. You know, people moved and that moment of compassion sometimes will take their tithe, which is causing them to be in covenant with God and move it over to alms. 
and give it to the, the homeless or the needy, and they, they don't understand why they're not seeing a, th a 30, 60, 100-fold blessing on giving to the alms, is because people are mixing all of this up, yeah. and God wants us to be in covet with Him and prospering, but we've got to do it God's way. You don't get to just a pick and choose out of his word what you want to believe and receive. Right. God has his ordinances in his order. So so you may be saying to yourself, you know, I have a heart to please God. I want to be in covenant with him, mm -hmm. but I am absolutely strapped financially. And you don't understand things are really, really bad in my life. Right. So we want to talk to those people right now. Come on, because God knows our hearts and he knows when his children, young and old, are in trouble. He is lo a loving father. Yes. Come on, let's get that straight right now. That answers the heart cry of his children. Come on, are you one of his children? He yes. hears you. He hears you. We went through this a long time ago ourselves. And, you know, we, we don't teach on things that we haven't Walk seen through. or walked through, right? Amen. Uh, so we, we this is something we went through a long time ago ourselves. And, and here's what we did. First, we repented uh, of not being good stewards over our finances. And for not putting him first, God first, in our money by living beyond our means. That's right. Second, we gave him something to work with, right? right. Amen. We had we had what we had to to give right then was an act of faith and asked him to increase us so that we could be faithful in our ties. We meant it with all of our hearts. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And and as the increase came in, we recognized it that it was God answering our prayer right yes. and we were faithful to give it when we got it that's right we we very quickly we were in a place where we were tithing we were sowing seed we were giving first fruit offerings mm -hmm. and giving alms that's right we quickly god brought us back, Quick, to, back yeah. to where we need to be and we were able to do everything absolutely but once but we had to first recognize and take responsibility for not being completely good stewards over our money yeah. at the time in our lives, mm -hmm. and and um and God is faithful, and amen, he, and He's merciful. Yes, He is, amen. You know, it's really being super honest with God and and being faithful not to eat your seed mm -hmm. or your tithe when He gives you grace and makes a way for you to to bring it bring it to Him. Mm -hmm. You know, He's going to test you in it because just just like the the loaves of the fishes, you think about the loaves of the fishes, He knows how to multiply it very quickly. Yep. And he knows that if it, you know, he knows if the intentions of your heart are pure or not. That's right. You know, he's merciful, he's loving, and he's quick to come to our aid. Yes, he is. You know, is. it's time to take the limitations off of what God can do because he will bless those that are in covenant or those that are trying to be in covenant with him. Amen. So there have been so many times that God has turned things around for us. I can tell you that right now. And he is the one that gives us wisdom come on to obtain wealth he is the one that makes a way when there seems to be no way that's right and you know when god starts bringing it in if he brings it an extra extra uh, a little bit say you give it give an offering and you're saying lord i really want to get to a place where i'm tithing and i'm in covenant with you and i'm gonna believe you for the increase mm -hmm. well when you start seeing a little bit more you know coming your way or left over at the end of the week don't go buy a blouse or a shirt or, or a hat with it or, or something frivolous. Make sure that you're obedient to give it toward your tithe. That's right. And ask God, okay, God, I'm giving it. I'm being faithful. Now increase me and continue to get me there. Yeah. He's going to test you in that. Absolutely. But you're going to notice that when you when he's faithful and then you're faithful, he's faithful again. Yeah. And then you're faithful again. And then you're, he's faithful again. And he just goes back and forth. And then all of a sudden you're there. Yeah. You're there. You're on top of everything again. Come on. You know, the Lord will allow your faith, you know, for His uh, provision to be tested too. Absolutely. You know, I remember when, uh, when years ago, when when uh, I had a, a business called Kids for Christ. I mean, it's a Kids Kingdom. Kids Kingdom. Kids Kingdom yeah. yeah, Kids for Christ was our ministry, <laughs> but uh, for for children and our yeah. and our other ministry. Um, you know, going out on the on the highways and byways. But we had a business called uh, Kids for Kingdom, and. Uh, and I ran it for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. But you know, the last three years, I was really praying secretly about when it was going to be time to close down that business. And and I wasn't, I was really keeping it between God and I, and I was, I was asking him about it. 
And it seemed like every time I approached the Lord about when would it be time for me to close the business down and go full-time ministry, the Lord would answer me with not yet or just a while, little while longer. <laughs> you know, and this went on for about two and a half years because I, I would pray and ask him about, you know, every two to three months, you know, and then it got, <laughs> as the time went on, it seemed like I, I started asking him a little bit more and he stopped answering me. Mm. Sometimes God will just stop answering you. And, um, and when he went silent, it, I really felt like it was a test. And, um, and I said, okay, Father, I trust you. And mm -hmm. I trust your judgment. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know what's best for us. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I won't ask you about this anymore. When you're ready for me to shut down Kids Kingdom and go full-time ministry, I want you to tell me through my husband. So I'm putting out a <laughs> fleece here. I put a fleece out to the Lord. Come on. I said, I want you to tell me through my husband because he doesn't even know I'm bringing this to you in prayer. Mm -hmm. And he would probably be the last one to say to do it because it's half of our income at the time. And, uh, you know, God tested me in that. And I, I did not ask him about that for about three months. Yeah. And all of a sudden, my husband calls me on the phone on the way home. And he says, when I get home, I would like for us to sit down and have a talk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? what what's all this about? <laughs> you know, because uh, I don't like, ever do that. No. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm sitting down at the table and I said, OK, honey, what do you need to talk about? You know. And, uh, and he says, it's time for you to shut down Kids Kingdom. God yeah. has told me that it's time. And I just jumped up and said, I know that's God. That's God right there. Yeah. You know, even when God, even when you wait on the promise and even when God shifts you into that financial blessing mm -hmm. where you're able to go into another endeavor, okay, mm -hmm. another chapter of your life, he's still going to test you in whether you believe that he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Yeah. That's right. So, so we shut down Kids Kingdom. We sell everything. Everything sells really quickly. Yeah. Everything's gone, and um, um, we're you know we're just kind of getting everything paid off. Everything's ready to move on into beginning to go into ministry, and his his work vehicle breaks down. Mm -hmm. Now this work vehicle is like the workhorse of the you know it is it you is need needed it to do the work to yeah. do the work to bring in the the funding that we need as a family yeah. to make it in life it was it's part of our livelihood yeah. and this the, the transmission went out it did and we had just paid off the truck uh, about a month and a half earlier mm -hmm. no yeah no the warranty well, had the just run, war run out yeah it was about a month and a half earlier yeah and uh and we're like, oh my goodness, we have no warranty on this transmission. But only on the time that GM put on there, not the mileage. Yeah, but yeah. so, but but it had run out. It run out, and they didn't have to honor it. No, nope. they didn't have to honor it at all. And we mm -hmm. were in a situation where we may have to to bring you know, have eight thousand dollars. And at that time, in our in our marriage, you know, this was quite a while ago. Um, we didn't have eight thousand dollars sitting in the bank no. to be able to buy a, a new transmission no. uh, for this truck. No. And so, but instead of getting in fear over the finances, we continued to tithe. Mm -hmm. We continued to believe God, and uh, instead of crying and fussing around and worry, 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 and getting into scared, I turned that music of the worship music up higher in the house and just walked around our house for three days laughing at the devil and worshiping God. I said, Lord, I didn't I didn't wait for this prophetic word for us to <laughs> shut down and this in this answer to shut down kids kingdom to come to a situation where financially we're not making it. Right. I said, you're a big God. Mm. And I know that you have this all worked out. Mm -hmm. And I just began to decree and declare, God, I know that you're going to make it so that we get a new transmission in this truck and we're not going to pay not one cent for it, not one pity. Mm -hmm. Now listen, down at the at the at the, at uh, the dealership, dealership, it didn't seem like that was the case at all. Cuz I had been there for 3 days back and forth trying to get something done with this truck through the through GM. And and last time I left there, I told the service underwriter, I said, "You know what? I believe and I'm going to stand in faith that my God is going to make a way. And I'm not going to have to pay for this. And he said to me, I believe that too. And I said it loud enough that across the room, the young lady that takes the money for our services that are done to vehicles, she pipes up and says, I believe with you too. Amen. <laughs> So, there, so there, we've got agreement even yeah. on even on the premises there at the at the at the body shop portion of GM yeah. there at the dealership and and so 
we we get a phone call. We got a phone call. And the phone call said, you know what? This is rare, mm -hmm. but GM is going to honor your expired warranty. Yeah. And they're going to go ahead and put that transmission in your truck. Yeah. And we have a receipt that we've kept that shows that it should have been $7,999. Yep. And our balance was zero. Zero. And, and God is faithful. See, he's going to put you to the test. Yeah. If you really believe that he's Jehovah Jireh, yep. do you believe that he's really your source? Come on. You know, your employer is not your source. Mm -mm. Your retirement fund is not your source. Mm -mm. You know, it, um, it, God is your source. Yes. He's the one who gives you the wisdom to obtain wealth. He's the Amen. one that gives you the favor. He lines you up with, with new contracts. He lines you up with new acquaintances, new pe networking you to the right people yep. to bless you. Yes. But but you've got to be a covenant keeping people. Mm -hmm. God says, you got to trust me. He said, you know, tithing is the only, only one that God says, test me in this. Yeah. And you'll see the goodness of God. It's the only time he says it. Amen. Yeah. So let's pray. Come on. Why don't you pray for the people today? So Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for revealing it, Lord, in such a way that we can understand how the four types of giving really works in our life and how you view them and what they do for us when we obey them. So God, we... First and foremost, Father, we want to be in covenant with you, Lord. So we're believing as tithers that the ones that are listening, that currently aren't tithing, that are currently out of covenant with you, God, that you'll make a way, God, to bring them back into covenant with you, Lord, so that they would be able to start giving as you increase them and test them, that they would give the increase until they reach the point that they're giving the tithe, the full 10% of their income, God. And by doing that, Father, that you would bless them and pour out on them, Father, just as your scripture says, such a blessing that they would not be able to contain or receive it all. So God, we thank you right now for this word. Father, we just apply the blood of Jesus over each and every person and family that has listened to this broadcast. And God, we thank you thank that you, you are a covenant keeping God yes, and Lord. your promises are true and amen. Yes, so Lord. we declare them over our answer. lives right now. We yes, decree Lord. them to be so. And we thank you thank and we pray you, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. As you were praying, I was thinking about the oil that stayed. Mm. You know, that, that woman was, was thinking that she and her son were going to die. That's right. She was out there. In the word, he she it says that she was out uh, to get two sticks, gathering sticks, two two sticks mm -hmm. to to uh, to to start a little fire, to, so she could make one last little cake, cake with mm -hmm. the meal and the oil that she had. And here's and, Elijah. And here's Elijah. <laughs> and he says, he says, make me that cake. Right. Make me a cake. Make me one first. You know, you gotta give God something mm. to work with. Come on. And when she was obedient to that word of wisdom, that did not make any sense. Mm -mm. To give away her last meal. Right. If she really believed that she was going to die. And mm -hmm. her son was going to die. Mm -hmm. Nothing in the natural looked like they had any type of provision. Mm -hmm. But when she was obedient mm -hmm. to sow something that God says, give me that. Yeah. You know what? He says that go get as many pots as you can and not a few. Yeah. Not a few. Get as many as you can. That's right. And he says go in, close the door, and pour the oil. And the oil just kept running and running and running. And she came back and she said, we ran out of pots. <laughs> it's all that we can do. Yeah. And he says, I'll take that oil and go sell it and pay off all oh, your debt. Come on. Come on. Pay off all your debt. Mm. See, that's the kind of God that we yeah. serve. Yeah. You know, you have to be willing to do something. Something and give God us mm. something yeah. to work with and watch him multiply it. Mm -hmm. Just like the, the, the loaves of the fishes, like we were saying. Yeah. They had he says, What do you have? Right. He says, We have enough for one one little boy's lunch. Yeah. He says, Well bring it. He but you know, God's blessing on that. Multiplies it, yeah. and it's so much more than if you just kept and hold on to that little bit that you had. Amen. So we're telling you, sow a seed, sow something. something. And if you're not in covenant with God, sow something and ask God to bless it, and and that you know, that you want to get to that place where yeah. you're in covenant, yeah. and God is faithful to do it. Amen. And as you sow, pray, 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 and say, God, I'm believing 
what you're going to do for me here is increase me so I can be obedient to your word yes. over my life. And I can come into your statutes and, and your standards that you have set before me and yes. your commandments, God, that I would fall into your covenant blessing. Yes. Come on, pray it through. Yes. So we want to take a few moments. If there's anyone here that needs prayer tonight, mm -hmm. we're going to look back through the comments. If you're needing prayer for a financial breakthrough, we want you to comment so that we can pray in agreement with you. And we encourage you to uh, to, uh, to give us a comment for that. You know, there, there's going to be a lot of ministers on here. I'm already, we have a ton of comments here, so we're not going to be able. To, we are going to pray. First and foremost, know this. When you join us, on Testimony Tuesdays, and you put in a prayer request, we pray for you. Yes, Even if we don't pray for pray. you while we're live, we still, we still go pray. through and we pray for you. Yes. So understand that, okay? Amen. And because and we are going to align our faith with your faith and with the Son of God, Jesus' yes. faith. Yes. All right? We hey. got a lot of ministries that are on okay, here. Let's pray for them. Lord Father, we just thank you right now for the ministries that are yes. uh, that are uh, represented, Lord Father, under this, this broadcast. Lord Father, we pray for ministries all over the world right now, yes. Lord God, that are needing financing. They're needing buildings. They're needing, they're needing provisions to, to uh, feed the hungry. Lord God, they need Bibles. They need things in the ministry yes. to teach the people the ways of the Lord. Lord Father, we ask right now for supernatural provision to come yes. to them, Lord God. Lord Father, we ask right now that you dispatch the angels, Lord God, on assignment, Lord yes. God, to be to minister help to them, that you would bring resources resources to them. We say money come to them now yes. in the name yes, of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Lord God, we decree and declare breakthrough over every ministry that is represented here today. Lord God, everyone, Lord Father, that comments under this post, Lord Father, we decree breakthrough in finances, Lord God, that there will not be any lack. We break that spirit of lack. It's of the devil. It is not of God. Lord Father, we break the spirit of lack and decrease and we speak increase right now in abundance right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And we encourage you to sow something. Yes. Just sow something. And amen. Oh, we're going to say something else. I, I just want to recognize uh, the, some people that are uh, on with us from Uganda mm -hmm. that said, you know, it's 2 a.m. in the morning, but I just had to wake up and listen to this as I always do. Thank you so much. And we want to thank you. We, we want to thank, thank you, you for getting on with us. Yes. Precious woman of God. I, I'm Amen. not sure how, uh, is it Scovia, I think is, is how you pronounce your name. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to say, you know what? Thank you for, for becoming a follower and a watcher of Hightower Ministries. We hope that you're blessed by the, the things that the God has us speak. Thank you for your sacrifice. So thank you sweet. for your sacrifice. And, and may yes. the blessing of the Lord be upon you always, yes. wherever you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus In the Jesus name of the Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. And Sarah Nyberg, we come against panic attacks right, right now oh, in the yeah, mighty yeah, name of the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, Christ. It is not your portion. Oh, yeah, the yeah, joy of the Lord is going to fall upon you. And panic attacks are going to flee in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ because you have power, love, and a sound mind. Okay, Father, come on, understand right, right, right now that the enemy is trespassing well, yeah, and we are not taking it anymore. Panic attacks be gone in the, in the name mighty of name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Be healed in your yes, mind. Lord Father, we apply the blood of Jesus yes. over her, Lord God, right now. Lord Father, you are the peace. You're the God of peace. And we speak yeah. peace over her now. Hallelujah. 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 Shande Hallelujah. Lord Father, we bless everyone that is watching tonight. Lord Father, that uh, that is needing increase in their finances. Lord Father, in those that are been faithful to uh, to to support the ministries and and to tithe and to and to give offerings, Lord God, we ask, Lord, for a supernatural blessing to be upon yes. their lives, Lord God, that you would increase them on every side, Lord, Lord Father, that uh, that they have unexpected unexpected blessings. 
Lord God, that unexpected promotions, Lord God, unexpected contacts yes, and contracts, Father. Lord. Lord Father, we thank you right now for increase, Lord. Lord Father, that the wealth of the heathen is coming into the hands of the righteous now, Lord God. Lord Father, we thank you for that. There's a turning of a tide. It's, turning, it's a turning point now, Lord God, that those that have been faithful will increase on every side. And Lord, we thank you for expanding territories too in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we bless you, the Philippines. Philippines. We bless you, yes. Uganda. We bless you, Pakistan yes. and India. Holy we bless Pakistan. you for wherever you're watching yes. across this great world and across this nation of the United States. Yes, we thank God. you for, for coming on with us. And yes. we bless you we bless with the you. Lord's blessing upon your life. Amen. And keep your prayer requests coming. We always go back and check for days and days after. We're always looking at for comments. We want to make sure that we're always praying for everyone that is connected with High Tower Ministries. We'd love to hear from you. Amen. If you have any private prayer requests that you don't feel comfortable with putting under our, our post here, just email us at prayer requests. Uh, at HightowerMinistry.org, we would right. we would love to, to hear from you, and uh, if, if you um if if you uh, need to get connected with us that way, do it. Absolutely, we're also available for bookings if you're a church ministry and you're looking for guest ministry to come in. Uh, contact us at bookings at HightowerMinistry.org. We'd love to come as guest ministry or be part of your conference. And we encourage you to get connected with us by registering on our website at HightowerMinistry.org. And you'll get a free download there if you do that. Amen. And become a partner with Hightower Ministries. Prayerfully consider that. When you go to Hightower Ministries, you're, you're not only going to get a free download that will be a blessing to you, but uh, but you can find the donate donate page, a contact us page, and you could become a re-recurring re uh, partner, a monthly partner with us there. And we encourage you to pray about that. Amen. Look us up on YouTube and subscribe. Hit that bell. There's a amazing messages there that you can uh, watch and, and glean from and be blessed by. And don't forget, we have four broadcasts that go out four times a week right here Amen. on Facebook. Look for our Greater Glory teaching. It's prophetic teaching every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. That's all Eastern Standard Time. And Testimony Tuesdays each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we have great testimony coming to you from us and our guests, yes. and you will be blessed by watching this broadcast, we promise. We also want to encourage you to look up a Hightower Ministries podcast. We've got about 164 podcasts archived there, and uh, you can listen to us wherever you are. You can take us with you. Yes. You can find us on Spotify, Apple uh, podcast, iTunes, mm -hmm. Audible, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Amen. High Tower Ministries is also looking for a bass player right now, or, or a drum a drum player. We are we're taking uh, some applications there. So if you uh, are interested in our worship team, we'd like for you to contact us at HightowerMinistry.org to get connected with us for our monthly miracle service. Yes. Here in the Tidewater area, so you'd have to be close enough for that. Amen. Amen. Yep. We invite you to like us and follow us right here on Facebook, so you don't miss a show. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share this with your friends. But until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.